Dobro jutro, Atlantis. Dobro jutro, Billy Mac. Thanks a lot. Uh, we're up and ready to go again. And Atlantis, Space Hab for Biorack. We have a good view of Space Hab and Elena. Okay. For FO14 Step 12, that actually needs to be started about 10 minutes before the timer goes off so that you are at the appropriate sub-step which is sub-step 10 when the timer goes off. Okay, I understand the step uh, 12 of uh, FO14 must be started about uh, 10 minutes before the timer goes off to have the sub-step 10 uh, started on time. And we copy. I give you a little tour of Mir. I'm Jerry Leninger, of course, and I'm in the base block where you see most of the pictures that come out of Mir. It's the table where we all gather to eat uh, when the time's available. We've got uh, quite a bit of gear. We have a little sleep cabin over this way, and Charlie's going to have a hard time flying with all the cords, so, but he's going to do the best job he can given the circumstance. But inside the sleep cabin, there's also a little window that you can look out with good uh, earth observation. Sleeping bag sitting right here. This is, happens to be the commander's sleep station. And he's got a little mirror. He's got some personal pictures, uh, pens, patches, mirror 23 patch, for example. He's decorating his walls. Got a CD player, little uh, tape players to relax and take life easy. So this is where the commander normally sleeps. What else we have interesting? This is actually a little tool uh, area where you can pull the table down and do some pretty heavy pounding. It's a good solid steel uh, surface and comes in very handy when you're doing repair work. So have the, one of the air generating systems is here and also the CO2 uh, cleaning system is here as long as with a, with a uh, block threatening premise which takes out contaminants in the air. And all of those run in this module, and this is also a module where we're having some cooling leak problems, and we did some uh, repairs where we cut tubes and basically blocked them off with some plugs. And it's, as you can see, it's very difficult to work. Uh, the area has to get cleared. We had it totally cleared for about four weeks um, looking for the leaks, and it's very, very difficult to work back here. We're able to find one leak, but we still have some problems. So. Uh, Mike's going to have his hands full uh, working back here. Finding the leak is one thing, and then getting access to the leak is a different uh, ball game. But, and we'll back back out. By the way, the fire, I guess, is kind of interesting. People have heard about the fire. The fire was basically in this region here with the flame shooting across this way. And therefore, as you can see where the camera is, is basically where I was at, and we had one other body in front of me. I was passing the fire extinguisher, uh, but we can only get one person in here to fight the fire because of the flame location. And uh, at that time, the other Soyuz was on the other side where progress is now docked. So as you can see, it would have been very difficult to get through the flame itself to get to, the, uh, to one of the rescue vehicles. Uh, and it was very difficult to fight the fire because you could only get one body close enough to the fire itself. Uh, visibility in here was basically no visibility. And where Charlie is with the camera right now, it was you could sort of see your fingers if you looked hard. So it was very, very dense smoke. And uh, 
interesting experience, uh, something you don't want to repeat, of course, but uh, player in space is a different sort of entity than player down on the earth is what I learned through that experience. What you're hearing right now is the, um, the system right over here, which is the CO2 cleaning system and uh, a ventilator right next to it. The ventilator is aimed at it because one of the repairs that we did was to a fan. The cooling loop, of course, cools the air uh, coming through the, uh, the series of tubes, basically, and a fan blows through those tubes, and the cool air helps cool this system. The commander's post right here, which is, of course, interesting, and Commander Vasily's here. <laughs> and Vasily says hello to everybody. Doing a little work at the command post. He's got his uh, scope down here, a couple of CRT tubes. Enters a lot of different commands in this area. And over here is actually your uh, signalizatia pulse, or your uh, panel that gives you all your caution and warning alarms. Uh, fire extinguishers are here, and they're located there at every module. Vital piece of gear. And the things that I think pretty much uh, saved our lives are these uh, oxygen breathing devices. And uh, during the fire, of course, that had to go on quickly. So they're located in a nice location, and we've been resupplied, and everything's in place on the last progress. This is my little corner at the moment for uh, the greenhouse experiment. Yeah, I like that. Um, greenhouse, we'll show you in a minute. It's in another module called the Crystal module. But... Uh, when we grow these, uh, basically we're going to try and grow plants over a period of uh, a month cycle from one seed planting uh, through a uh, pollination, through a flowering, um, and then through a harvest of the seeds, and then a replanting of the seeds. And I hope to uh, do this with Sasha Lazutkin, the board engineer on this flight, and do this over a period of um, about 90 days, three cycles. This is a, a glove box that came from uh, Ames, and we'll use this glove box to uh, do all the very fiddly, tricky operations of the seeds and the fixations with chemicals. It's a major part of my experiment. Sit on the outside of the station. It's a sprawling station when you're doing an EVA. It's uh, not like being inside the, the uh, concave surface of the payload bay. And instead, it's convex the whole way. You feel like you're falling uh, the entire time. It feels like the space station itself is falling. Uh, to the point of free-falling parachuting, it gives you that sensation pretty much the whole time uh, throughout. And when it gets dark, you definitely don't want to be moving on the surface. When it gets dark, that instant you are basically blind until your eyes adjust maybe three or four minutes later, then you start seeing some of the form of the space station. But when I say it gets dark, it gets dark to the point where I've never seen dark as dark as the instant uh, the sun sets and you're out there on the outside of the space station falling. Even in the dark, it feels like you're falling for some reason. On the surface of the uh, space station, uh, it is also very crowded with experiments, with solar sensors, and of course with the uh, big solar arrays. And at many times, I was fairly trapped and could not go one way or another. The handrail in front of me had an experiment attached that was maybe a meter or two across, and so there were no options to go anywhere. So on the surface, getting from point A to point B was not a straight line by any means. There was a lot of dead ends along the way. And at one point, actually, to find our way back to the, uh, to the hatch to come back in, uh, Vasily and I both pushed off as far as we could uh, to try to get a broader perspective because you have, just like I feel right now, you have things all around you. You can't see the big view. You kind of have the trees, and you can't see the forest. And this is the Soyuz rescue vehicle right now. And the hatch is right here, so it's a tight squeeze. I'll just demonstrate getting in, but it's, it's not an easy way to get in this little vehicle. And right now I am in the, uh, the round ball that you normally see, the living section. Okay. This table, very nice, soft Velcro, and I found this the most effective place to do work. If I had surface sampling or air sampling, I'd organize my work right here, put everything in nice order, and then fly to the place where I had to do the sampling. Good. And Charlie, um, what I want to show you here is part of the T-Hoff uh, freezer unit, which we pulled out yesterday, of course, builds up ice all around it. And if you can look down here on the floor, this thing is just soaking with water. And uh, I've been using um, 
Jerry's old exercise equipment and underwear, <laughs> which I expect he's going to throw away. At least yeah, I, hope he, I hope he does. <laughs> I've been using it to uh, wipe up all the water on this on this uh, freezer unit. Water everywhere is a is a problem, and it does collect in the strangest places. Generally, over here, um, Jerry and I have been kind of Jerry's been uh, using this area as a as a wash area while uh, we've been doing our handover, um, and he's probably going to clean out this side. I've just been living on this side of it. As a general principle, I think uh, the goal is to reduce how much water we use and how much uh, wet towels we leave around because of the water problem condensing on pipes everywhere. So uh, I'm going to try and minimize all of the wet towels. As you all know, uh, John and Shannon work quite a lot with the greenhouse. Um, it's called Svet in Russian. And I'm going to be working with this uh, on this with um, Sasha Lazutkin. As I say, we're doing a seed to seed experiment, which has never been done before in space, taking um, basically rape seeds. It's, it's related to broccoli and growing them over a cycle of 30 to 40 days three times, we hope, during my mission. And uh, this is where Shannon and John did their harvesting. Right now, you can just see loose pieces floating around. I have a mass of bags that I'm going to be uh, unpacking and organizing to set this up again with a new gas exchanger and new uh, root modules that fit in the lower part of this um, orangerie, as they call it, or uh, greenhouse. Mike, I've come on an ideal of the tight spaces that we work in. So when Mike's doing this experiment uh, with Sasha, they're going to be stacked up like this uh, a lot of times, and uh, a lot of old gear, and that's why uh, we really appreciate all the efforts of the people on the ground to get gear out of here. And I, uh, for example, the EDLS on the late call this morning, it was a great call. We got another locker open. So uh, great work, and we all appreciate it. Before we're about out of time, I just want to thank you all for your attention, and I hope you've got a feel for the space station uh, as we flew you through it. Uh, it's a pretty pleasant place to live when you can get a space to look like this. Well, uh, Rob, I'd just like to say that uh, this is a great day for us. It's a little bit sad, of course, because uh, the thrilling flight is coming to an end, and we're going to have to separate the vehicles here tomorrow morning, and uh, that'll be a bittersweet memory for us. We've had a great time getting uh, Mike ready to take over the place uh, and fill the big shoes that Jerry's left behind here with uh, a lot of progress being made on board. We've had a great uh, progress towards making things uh, work better for our, our joint science program, and uh, we're happy that we were able to pull it off. Uh, this is Marcia Dunn of the Associated Press, again for Dr. Leninger. I'm wondering, do you plan to try to walk off the shuttle upon landing, or would you just prefer to be carried off uh, as your predecessor was? And do you think the curtailment of exercise about a month ago is going to affect your uh, rehabilitation? Uh, Marsh, I've been working very hard since that time, and we've had uh, we've solved that problem with the CO2, and so I've been able to uh, exercise very uh, strongly every day. I've got Carlos over here who's a Marine, and I'm going to have him yell in my ear to uh, get up and walk. So I plan on walking off the orbiter. This is Irene Brown with UPI, also for Dr. Leninger. Um, knowing what you know about life on Mir, would you repeat the experience, and is there anything that you would bring with you uh, if you were going up for a second time? It's been a fantastic experience. We've uh, met all of our goals, uh, accomplished all the tasks. It's been a tough time. And uh, when you get through something like that, a major adventure, major exploration, uh, we still have a critical phase to go to the reentry, of course. But uh, when I get back on Earth, uh, any adventure like that where you come close to pushing the envelope and survive, it's a great adventure. And in uh, retrospect, I have no regrets whatsoever. Uh, something I would have brought is just more plain old photographs of my family. Um, and when progress resupply vehicles came up, that was the best gift I had is uh, pictures of my son. This is James Mates from ITN of London. Michael Fole, what do you think of the physical condition of Mir now that you've seen it? And do you have any worries about spending the next four months or so up there? Um, the first question is basically, uh, the condition of Mir is, is one of, of uh, varied uh, newness or oldness, depending on where you are. The place where we are right now, the base block was launched uh, 10, 13 years ago, and uh, there are newer elements that were launched only a year ago. So as you go around the space station, you find some things that are really quite, quite old. Uh, they've had to be replaced one or two, three, four times. And then there are other places where it looks brand spanking new. Um, as for my worries, I don't really have many. Um, 
right now the uh, the thing which we have to con concentrate on is how the uh, the systems of the mayor will will work and I'm going to be helping Sasha here on my right and the city commander on the left over there basically with some of the repairs and some of the basic operations of this station but as long as we can keep working hard with the ground and uh, we keep the supplies coming we can keep maintaining these things could you outline the possible problems that you think might arise and the steps that you have taken in advance or how you will cope with them when they do arise? Uh, I think probably the biggest problem that's being worked continuously now by, um, by, the, by us and the, uh, the soup, the uh, control center in Moscow, is that of the cooling system. Um, there's a number of different uh, cooling loops that carry uh, cooling refrigeration fluid around the station and some of those have leaks. And there's one uh, outstanding remaining leak just behind us, actually, behind the flag here, in a compartment called Front. And uh, Sasha and uh, Vasily especially will be working on the pipes there to try and uh, isolate that leak. However, the systems that depend on that, um, that co cooling system, particularly the system that scrubs the carbon dioxide from the air, now have other means of um, getting rid of their heat. I mean, in particular, using um, directed airflow. So there are always workarounds being found and uh, I have some faith in the ingenuity of both us here on the station and the people on the ground to keep these things going. Did you discover unsafe or dangerous parts or systems of the Mir space station and for how many years do you think the security of Mir can be guaranteed? I think that's the hardest part or the most difficult part of all this. It's very hard to predict uh, the future of mechanical systems. Um, the main thing to do is maintain them to the best of your ability, replace parts when you can. Um, and we did the best we could over the last four and a half months to get the uh, station back into good shape. Um, I anticipate that we will have problems in the future and then Mike will be challenged and the, my crewmates will be challenged in the future. Uh, As far as how long it can last, it depends on uh, how much you're willing to keep repairing and how often you can get the, uh, the right parts up here. And also building in maybe a little redundancy to some of the systems. If uh, one system fails, you back it up with uh, other systems and other means to provide what you need, oxygen, for example. Uh, we'd just like to say to the control center and to all the folks in phase one, all around the Johnson Space Center, the Kennedy Space Center, and all of NASA, Our colleagues in Russia, uh, European Space Agency, and uh, the soup in Moscow, everyone that has participated in this, a giant team has put together a very, very successful mission. It was a privilege for us to be out executing it for you as you planned it. You did superbly, and we're uh, really proud to have been able to be part of it. Hi, Charlie. This is Phil, and it's uh, really great to look up at the screen here and see all you guys together. Uh, You know, it takes a lot of months to put one of these together, and we've got a lot of folks here glad to see the final result. And uh, this picture on the screen right here is really heartwarming for everybody. You guys have done a fantastic job up there. Vasily and Sasha, who have uh, become our wonderful friends, they've let us show their wonderful home, and we thank them very much for that. And with that in mind, we'd like to leave them a small gift from us. I'll hold the button down. It's a uh, T-shirt, one for each of them. With our name of our shuttle and our crew patch, the Philly. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Thank you very much. And also one for Sasha. A memento. You can remember our flight. Yeah. And also from Phase One, the Phase One folks would like to leave their thanks also with the uh, crew of Mir, with the Phase One show representing our program, which has been so successful. Houston, Rossi is ready to close the hatch, and uh, we wished him well. Had a great flight, and uh, just kind of sorry to see them close the hatch on ourselves here, but uh, we're sure they're going to do great. Спасибо. 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 Спасиб